Welcome to Coach Connect Hub. It is Tuesday training, December 12th, 2023. And our special guest trainer today is Molly Lowe, our LinkedIn profile optimization expert. Molly is doing part one today and part two in January. And I will have that next session uploaded as well. Anyway, Molly, take it away, and uh, we'll get to Q&A at the end. Fantastic. Thank you, Sam, for having me. And hello, everyone. Again, my name is Molly. I am a business coach specifically for career coaches. My whole jam, my specialty is LinkedIn. Now, I, I don't know how some of y'all are, but when I attend these, there are some really good ones, and then there are some that are like, okay, this was nice. I really want to bring a lot of value today. And today's focus is on optimizing your LinkedIn profile. So a couple fun facts, if you will, for you to know. Number one, I paid my dues in corporate HR for over 20 years. I started my HR career when LinkedIn launched. So I've had the, the privilege of seeing how LinkedIn has evolved over time. Now, I don't know, let me know in the chat or come off of me, whatever you feel most comfortable doing. How many of you feel like LinkedIn is like really stuffy, very business, way too corporate, and you're not really sure how to leverage LinkedIn when it comes to your coaching business? Yeah, yep, yes. Yes, absolutely. I thought the same thing, okay? When I started my HR career, I used LinkedIn to recruit top talent. That was what we did and to market our company and our business. And so when I started my coaching business six years ago, I had to figure out how to leverage LinkedIn from a perspective of number one, not losing my connections that I already had, but also how do you pivot? How do you shift into leveraging LinkedIn to do the things that you needed to grow and accelerate your business? Now, um, today's workshop is really going to be the nuts and bolts, the how on your profile, okay? So I'm gonna tell you right now, Make sure you have a pen and paper, get ready to roll and or rewatch this because we're gonna really be going through things. Now, the second fun tip, fun fact I should say that I have about this is if you are a person who is a high ticket coach or if you are somebody who is like, I am B to B or even if you're B to C to B and you're really looking to work with organizations, companies, LinkedIn is going to be the pl best place for you to do your sales and marketing. Here's why. 50% of the users on LinkedIn make 75,000 or more annually. Okay. So we are talking people who, yes, nowadays I get it, where inflation, like my, my 13 year old son said, mom, inflation is really inflating. And it really is. Okay. And if you're a high ticket or if you are a coach that work with organizations, the reason why I highly recommend for you to be on LinkedIn is because if you want to be in front of key decision makers or people who have the financial capacity to work with you to invest in a coach, LinkedIn is the way to go. 90% of my leads and then turn clients come from LinkedIn. Okay, so just a couple of things to kick us off, okay? So go ahead and like I said, get pen and paper out. The best way for us to do this, I practice what I preach y'all, okay? I am going to use my profile as a guide for today's workshop. This is what is working for me and I want to show you exactly what I do so you can implement that, okay? So for the rest of the workshop, we are going to go ahead and I'm gonna share my screen and let me just get us i want to see all of your beautiful faces so let me just all right can you see my linkedin profile okay what we are going to do is i'm going to tell you about all of the things that you need to know not just scraping the surface okay so first off you want to ensure that you have your own personal profile 
I can talk a little bit about company pages in a minute, but right now the focus is your personal profile. People, as you know, as a coach, people are attracted to you. You are your brand, okay? So where you focus on your LinkedIn sales and marketing has to be through your, your personal profile. Now, some of the things that first off I want for you to do, if you scroll down, right in the middle of your profile, right underneath is the ability for you to turn on creators mode. Please make sure that you do that, okay? When you turn on a creator's mode, you will have access to things that the normal LinkedIn profile will not have. For example, LinkedIn Live, you are going to have the ability to do audio events, newsletters, and your connect button becomes a follow button, okay? They can either follow or connect. They can follow and connect. It is depending on who wants to do what with your profile, okay? The key piece to this that has helped me to accelerate and grow my coaching business has been the ability to go on live and the newsletters. These are the two most powerful tools on LinkedIn, okay? And let me start to break this down a little bit for you, okay? Specifically, LinkedIn Live. As you guys know, a lot of social media platforms prefer a specific type of post. LinkedIn likes video. They especially like when you go on live. When you take full advantage of their LinkedIn Live capability, it increases the engagements and thus the impressions. And I'll walk through the um, data in a little bit here for you, okay? But LinkedIn Live is LinkedIn's favorite thing. And for those of you who know anything about beating the algorithm, this is what you want to know. You have to go on live. Okay. Now, I don't know how many of you guys are speakers. Okay. I'm a, I'm a keynote speaker. I do a lot of speaking events, things like this. I do a lot of them virtually at conferences, summits, in person, all of that stuff. If you are struggling to build your email list, newsletter on LinkedIn is going to be a fantastic way for you to grow your email list. These newsletter actually acts like an actual newsletter. So long as your subscribers ha have their uh, settings set on receiving emails, your every single time you publish your newsletter, it goes directly into their email inbox. How, and, and the reason why I'm telling you this is because as a keynote speaker, there are times where when I apply to speak at an event, one of the questions is, how big is your email list? People want to leverage your community. And sometimes if you are a speaker wanting to speak on a bigger stage, your email list and your subscri subscribers is a prerequisite to be a speaker. So you want to make sure that you take advantage of that, okay? These are the two key pieces. So turn on your creators mode first and foremost, okay? Now let's go back to my profile here. Let's start from the top, okay? Let's go ahead and really break down the things, like I said, that is important for you to know. Your headline, that header follows you everywhere you go on LinkedIn, okay? Whether you are making a comment, whether you're liking a post, whether you're sending out a message, this headline follows you. It is really important that you are being very short and sweet about who you are and what you do. Case in point, read mine. What does it say? Business coach, helping who? Career coaches to do what? Accelerate their business, where? On LinkedIn. It's really challenging and it doesn't help you with your brand from a marketing perspective if you add fluffy things that your clients don't understand. You need to be short and sweet. When people come across your headline tied to your name anywhere on LinkedIn, you never want anyone to be confused to who you are, who you help, and how you help. Your headline needs to be short and sweet and to the point, okay? Now, the other piece of this is when you turn on your creators mode, you're going to have the ability to add five hashtags on here. 
A couple things about hashtags. You want to be found. That is the point of hashtags. Don't make up your own hashtag. I'll be really honest with you. A lot of times people will use their own hashtags. The purpose of LinkedIn is to be found and for your clients to be attracted to you. You have to align your profile with hashtags that your ideal client is going to resonate with. Okay. So again, if you've got something real, you know, unique or real catchy that no one's really going to know, you're never going to be found. Okay. The whole intentionality of LinkedIn is to be found. So for me, I talk about being a first generation entrepreneur. I talk about side hustling. I talk about business tips entrepreneurship, and obviously LinkedIn marketing. These are the five hashtags. Now, in case you're wondering where you do that, it is right here where you turned it on. You can add your five linked or your five hashtags right here on the same place that you turned on your creators mode. Okay. I know I'm talking a lot at you. Okay. But we're going to try to jam pack this as much as possible. Highly recommend for you guys to go ahead and jot down questions on the side so that when it comes time to Q&A, I can help to field those for you, okay? Okay, so moving right along. Now, your contact information. I know this is so obvious, but it's really not obvious for a lot of, of people. If you use your LinkedIn strictly for corporate reasons, and now you're using it to operate your business from for lead generation, please make sure that you've updated your contact information. One of the biggest things that I find my clients doing is creating friction and or unnecessary barriers to people wanting to schedule a call with them. Make it easy for people to talk to you. They want to contact you. And yes, of course, you're gonna get the scammers, you're gonna get people are trying to pitch you, yes. But at the end of the day, you are here for your ideal client. Don't make it hard for them to contact you, okay? Now, right under that is the ability to customize a booking link, okay? Now you can do this by this little pencil up here. If you scroll down, it'll say customize but, uh, custom button. You can edit your custom button and it will direct them so you can send them to your, your um, lead capture form. You can send them to your Calendly booking, okay? Whatever you wanna do, and you have the ability to customize what it says, okay? Again, make it easy for people to talk to you, okay? Now, when you turn on creators mode, usually there is a like connect button here, but what you'll find is when you turn on creators mode, it'll say follow, okay? There's a difference between followers and connections. Let me break it down. Followers are people who are just that, they follow you, okay? Connections are your first degree connections. These are people within your community that you can have free conversation, two way back and forth, okay? Now, at the end of the day, I am somebody who firmly believes that, yes, ideally, we want quantity as well as quality followers and connections. But if you can't get the quantity, there better be quality. So that is where LinkedIn marketing and your copy, your messaging really has to be aligned with what you do, who you help, and the one solution that solves that one problem that you are obsessed with, okay? That's how you are able to grow that following and that connection, okay? Now, one little tidbit about connections. In your LinkedIn lifetime, you are limited to only 30,000 connections. Now, I know that you guys might think, oh, well, 30,000, that's a lot. If, you, if you're anything like me, where I'm going to be in business for a really long time, 30,000 first degree connections is not a lot at all. You want to be very intentional about who you're sending connection requests out to. What I teach my clients when I work with them is this. Your first degree, first degree connections, 
75% of that should be made up of your ideal client. Okay, you should only be sending connection requests out 75% of them to your ideal client. That's how you can have that free conversation via the emails with them with, you know, for free. Okay. And oh, I should also make a mention. You can do everything I'm teaching you guys today is on the free version of LinkedIn. You do not need to go premium. Okay. This is all the free version. Now, the other remaining 25% of your connection, AKA your community should be made up of referral partners. Okay. People who can send referrals to you and you can send referrals out to, okay. And of course, other coaches, because I believe coaches are the best when they work with other coaches, learn from people. Okay. 75% of your, of them should be your ideal. The remaining 25 should be referral partners, people that are in your network, like coaches that you can learn from. Okay. Now, the other piece of your profile header section should be the providing services. You can add that here in case you guys are wondering where, okay, add profile section button right here. And you will see that there's a whole bunch of things in here that's that you can add on here. While we're here, I'm going to tell you right now, please make sure you go ahead and turn on your recommendations as well as the featured section. And again, you can do that by the adding profile section button here. Okay. Now, when you are showing people that you are providing services, again, this is a really great way to be found. Okay. So for example, if I were to just open up LinkedIn again over here, and if I were to search up now, career coaches are my ideal, okay? Because I'm a business coach for career coaches. If I just use the search bar up here, you can see the first button is people who provide this service. People, we want to be found. Make it easy to be found, okay? And so that's the reason why you want to include this providing services because if somebody is looking for you and they put it up here in the search bar, the first, literally the first button is, oh, here are all the people who are providing the service. You want to be a part of that list, okay? Now, I will share a couple nuances about the providing services. I, I do, in my business, I do about 10% consulting, okay? 90% coaching. And as coaches, you guys understand the difference between coaching and consulting. LinkedIn is limited in the services that they have outlined. Pick the one that is the closest to what you would identify as your services, okay? But don't go crazy either. You don't wanna confuse your clients. Like I always say, confuse clients don't convert. If you're saying that you can do 50 million things in your providing services section, it's not gonna resonate with your ideal clients. Pick no more then three services on here and list it under the providing services section, okay? Moving right along. Now, when you turn on your creators mode, the next best thing that I love is the analytics, okay? Numbers are important, people. As the CEO of your coaching business, you have to know how to make sense of the analytics from your social media. Now, you will see here the analytics, okay? Now, it automatically defaults to the past seven days. I recommend that you guys look at the past 28 days, okay? Now, I'm gonna share a couple things here for you guys to look at. First off, I'm gonna go past 28 days, show results. You are gonna see that there is a filter between impressions and engagement. And I'm going to teach you the difference. Impressions is literally just how many times your posts are in front of somebody's eyes, okay? How many times is it seen on the newsfeed? Engagements is when people like, they heart, they give you the little light bulb, insightful emoji, the laughing emoji. Anytime they engage with your post, it's called an engagement. Now, here is what I want for you to focus on. Impressions and engagements are not created equal. 
You want to focus on engagement because engagement drives impressions. Impressions do not drive engagement. Okay, so let me say that again. Engagements drive impressions. Impressions do not drive engagement. Okay, so in simpler terms, the more people like, heart, laugh, engage with your comments, the more people will see it. The more visible that post gets pushed out because the LinkedIn algorithm is like, oh, Molly's community really likes this post. This is great. Awesome. Let's put it out to more people. But it doesn't work that way with impressions. You can have 200, 300 impressions, meaning two to 300 people could look at your newsfeed. But if they don't engage, it then starts to plateau and it drops. The visibility for your post will not go anywhere after that timeline, okay? So that's the reason why you want to engage. You yourself should engage with your posts. If you ever come and copy any of my stuff, which I highly recommend that you do, okay? Take my strategy, okay? I will, you will always see, I'm liking my posts, I'm commenting on my own posts, I am encouraging the engagement on my post. The more I engage, the more my community engages, the higher the impressions, okay? Now, if we go there, you will see, okay, that, okay, so I've had a drop. Yep, absolutely. Why? Because the last week I've been on vacation. I haven't done anything, <laughs> okay? So that's where it's at. But what I want for you to do is I want for you to focus right here on your top performing posts. If you scroll down, okay, you are going to see your top posts. And this is important because this gives you, if you wanted to test out a specific way of talking to your clients, test it out here and take a look. If it works for you, you simply rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. People love when I am super polarizing on LinkedIn, okay? I tell people, you should be skeptical of me as a coach, absolutely. If you're not skeptical of me, that's a problem, okay? I should earn your trust. These are the kinds of posts that my community likes. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna keep giving them what they like. You will also see that again, a top post is my lives. Your LinkedIn lives will usually always get a good amount of engagement, okay? So let's go back to some other analytics here for you guys to take a look at. Audience, okay? Now, one of the things that, again, I'm gonna go off of the past 28 days, I want for you to take a look at this, the top demographics here. Remember how I told you guys that your connections, AKA your community, 75% of them should be your ideal clients. You could do a quick litmus test and audit right here. For me, I want to make sure that the people who are following me are the right people. Yup, I've got founders. Yup, I've got owners. Yup, I have recruiters because recruiters are typically the ones that become career coaches. I know that my followers, my community is made up of the people that I need it to be. Okay, so you can always search there. Now, if you guys want to go by industries, you guys can do that. Again, all really good things, right? You can take a look. Does it fall within the industries that is considered your niche? These are all of the things that you want to focus on. Now, of course, for me, I want to work with CEOs. I want to. So senior and owner, absolutely. I'm capturing that, okay? Use your analytics to help you really figure out how effective your posts are and how you are nurturing the community in your connection requests, okay? Moving right on back to my profile. Let's go ahead and get us going. All right, featured section. As I shared for you, you do have to turn on this section, okay? So you go into the add profile section and, um, and open the, um, the feature. 
Now, as you can see here, that I have all of the things that I need for my marketing portfolio. I have my newsletter. I have my freebie to drive organic emails to my email list. I'm a keynote speaker, so if you want to book me for a speaking event, all of my, my portfolio is here for you. And of course, if you want to book a call, here you go. Your featured section should be clean. It should be exactly what I'm doing here, okay? If you are all of these things, this is what you should put in your feature section. Other really good things, if, you, if you're not quite ready yet, minimally, at least have your booking link so people know how to book you, okay? If you have a really good testimonial, add the testimonial in your featured section. That's also a really good place to highlight that for people, okay? Now, for, let me just make another mention real quick here about the activity. I recommend for you to post once a day, Monday through Friday, okay? Unless you're like my clients who are career coaches, where their clients are job seekers, okay? Job seekers, especially if they are full-time and they're working Monday through Friday, they're not job searching until the weekends. In which case, if you are a career coach, if you're a leadership coach, if you're if you're anyone like an executive coach, resume writer, anybody in that professional development realm that I'm talking to, your goal is to post on Monday through Saturday, okay? Because Saturday is the number one day in which people are job searching. But for anybody else, if you're not a, a career career coach, leadership coach, any of the you know job searching stuff, Monday through Friday, once a week is completely fine, okay? It's all you really need to do to stay consistent. The about section. So let me share a little fun fact about you guys uh, for with you guys. I went two years, almost three years without a website. I didn't have one. Why? I really wanted to focus on my sales. I wanted to get reoccurring consistent revenue before I started investing in that. And so I would send everybody to my LinkedIn profile. That was my website, okay? And it worked really well because I grew my community really fast, okay? And I share that because the about section of your LinkedIn profile is exactly the same kind of strategy that you want to employ about the about section in your website. So it's not about you. This section isn't about you. If you read this, it is, hey, I'm telling you what you want to hear from me. Here's how I can help you. Here's what I'm gonna do for you. Here are the results that I've helped my clients to achieve that maybe you want to achieve as well. I help you to do this. By the way, book a call. Every single section of my profile allows for someone to book a call with me, okay? Always make it easy for them to call you. But this about section is really not about you. It's about what you can do for your ideal client. Write it from that perspective, share any milestones, you know, any results that you've been able to help your clients achieve, or maybe if you haven't yet booked any clients, <coughs> excuse me, if you're still working on booking your first client, talk about the results, the transformation that you have been able to experience, okay? And let me give you even more golden nuggets. I've highlighted it here, okay? Here's what I teach my clients. When you are articulating the ROI of what you can do for them, three things, money saved, money earned, time saved. If you can articulate these three, these three KPIs, it helps people to understand the ROI of working with you. Because at the end of the day, let's, let's cut through the chase. People only care if you can help them earn money, save money, and save time, okay? Money and time is always gonna be the top commodity. So when you are thinking about quantifying your results, make sure it falls under these three buckets, okay? Moving right along. Under the about section, you can also add top skills. Now, same thing, I would highly recommend that you guys only focus on no more than three top skills, okay? It gets really easy and really confusing when you start um, 
um, adding way too much. So one to three at, at best. Now, for the experience section, you guys can see, I have pictures here. Why? LinkedIn, first and foremost, will always be a social media platform. It will. Add pictures, okay? Go ahead and show people what you've done. If you've received written testimonials, make it a screenshot, take a picture of it, upload it under your profile. Let people know all of the amazing things that you have done in your business, okay? You definitely want to add any uh, media, any video, anything that you want to make it look visually amazing, you definitely want to do that, okay? And dun da da of course, I'm sure you're not surprised by now. Yet again, book a call with me is right here. That link to book a call with you should be plastered in every single section, every crevice of your profile, all right? And again, same thing, I just simplified the about section, okay? To add to the experience section down here, okay? So I usually get, a common question I get is, Molly, should I delete my corporate career? And I would say no, because guess what? Your career helps that's what built you to be who you are today. A lot of the times people want, when they are thinking about, do I want to work with you as a coach? They want to know what your credentials are, okay? By keeping all of your experience on here, it allows for them to understand your journey and understands your story. And again, it builds credibility. That is the whole point of LinkedIn is building credibility, that no like and trust factor, and this is how you do it. So keep all of your experience on there. Okay. Education, license and certifications, straight to the point. Nothing super fluffy that you guys need to do. This isn't, dare I say, as important, if you will. Okay, because it, it's just really not. Right. From a marketing perspective, it, it's helpful for credibility. And again, like just understanding who you are, what you bring to the table. But where the heavy lifting is is through experience section, your about section, and your header section, okay? Now, the thing about the skill section, this one's interesting because you, um, you can add skills, but it doesn't have weight until someone endorses you, okay? So very rarely do I ever add any of my skills. People actually add these for me. I've never added these. So you can see, like, all of my people have endorsed me for things, which is great because then it carries more weight. But it's not anything that if you don't have anyone or nobody endorses you, it's not a make or break in your profile. It just is, it's icing on the cake if you have it, okay? Now, here is where, oh, I love talking about recommendations because it is underutilized and it is such a great way for you to give people an experience of you. Now, of course, if you are a coach that already has clients and if they're on LinkedIn, highly recommend that as part of your um your client closure process that you are asking them to fill out a linkedin recommendation okay 100 percent. i kid you not how many times my clients would say to me after they've already signed and paid the invoice and all that stuff and we started working i oh so many of my clients have said molly can i just come clean i'm like sure I actually reached out to all of your former clients just to make sure you weren't scamming me. I reached out to all of your former clients to know, just to check to see if you know what you're talking about. And that's what they want. They want justification. They want to know, especially if you're a high ticket coach like I am. It's not $20 to work with me. Okay. So it is a great way to not only build your credibility and rapport, but it also helps you to, um, what's the word, combat any objections that people have, any hesitations at all working with you, okay? Now, here's a nice little tip that, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna scroll down here for you, specifically down to Linda's. Now, Linda actually isn't a client of mine, okay? When you, when you have someone fill out a recommendation, they have to pick a relationship. 
And as I shared with you, LinkedIn doesn't have a, a lot to pick from, but she really wasn't a client of mine. For those of you who have really honed in on your sales skill and you have delivered a lot of value and service on your discovery call, but yet for some reason that person was just a not right now, or maybe they don't have the financial resources to work with you, a great way that a lot of people have offered is, Molly, I thank you so much for this time, your gift of time. What can I do in return for you? I tell them this. Actually, yeah, could you actually write about your experience of the discovery call? Anybody who has a hesitation, and you can see right here. And then I had my clarity call, which is my discovery call with her. Wow. Done, done deal. If you are ever hesitant about talking to me on a sales call, this right here, and I have many other recommendations that talked about my discovery call, my clarity call, and how I wasn't sleazy, how I didn't convince her to work with me, how I didn't come at her from a, a place of selfishness and greed, but that I was truly a coach that provided value first. This is exactly how you should be using your recommendations. Your recommendation section, if you are intentional and strategic, putting your CEO hat on means that your recommendations, your posts, your content, anything you're pushing out of LinkedIn should combat any of the objections that you may be faced with on your sales call. This is how I've been able to convert so many of my connections into clients because it's already been washed out. It, all of my laundry is out here for people to see. And there's no, I, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed of it. So when people can share and write a testimonial for you about the kind of coach you are, even though they haven't paid you a penny, says a lot about you. And the recommendation section is a beautiful way to do that, okay? Right? So let's go back to the profile. Any publications that you've had, okay, go ahead and add it. Another really fun fact, I was highlighted by LinkedIn. Why? When I asked how they found me, they said my hashtags. If you wanna be published, those hashtags matter. They work. That was the only way that I've been published is because people found me via the hashtags, okay? Honors and awards, again, nice to have. Languages, nice to have. Organizations, nice to have. Interested causes, nice to have, okay? Nothing that's gonna necessarily make or break, okay? So, I know that was a lot. That's a lot of me talking at you. As a coach, as fellow coaches, I'm sure you guys know, we don't do a lot of the talking. We ask the questions and we listen. So it, it can be a lot to, to digest. But this here, right here. Oh, actually, you know what? Let me let me throw in another little goodie here for you guys. Newsletter. If you haven't thought about creating your newsletter, do it and do it now. And I know I kind of prompted that at the beginning of today's session. One of the quickest, best way for me to grow my email list. I literally now, now I'm at 1300, which is up by 100, by 100 people um, from the last two weeks. Okay. But I grew it from zero to 900 in four days, four days. I mean, how quick, how many of you can grow your organic email list in 900 people in four days? I know I couldn't, I still can't. Okay. Your newsletter is amazing. And it's one of those things where don't sleep on it. Do as I say, don't do as I do. Focus on the newsletter sooner than later. I wish I would have known because if I would have known, this would have happened six years ago. And I didn't know. Now we know. So now you know. Okay. Right? Again, a lot of me just chit chatting here. Let me stop the screen share. Questions, comments. Molly, oh my goodness. I've got, I don't know how many pages. I'm 
I always say, I knew it was going to be good. I knew it. I didn't know it was going to be fabulous, but I should have known. Anyway, thank you so much for doing this. I'm looking forward to round two in January. I am going to stop the recording and um, we'll take questions. So yeah. thank you, actually, Molly. Actually, Sam, if I could just right before you stop the recording here, before I forget. For sure. Okay? For those of you who are here and those of you who are catching the replay, I was just telling Sam, my great, I'm an overgiver to a fault, okay? As a thank you for being here and tuning in and, and supporting, I would love to give you the gift of time, my time, and give you a complimentary LinkedIn audit. So all of the things we talked about, go in and make those edits. And then if you would love for me to take a look, yeah, let's hop on a one-on-one -on -one call, okay? And let's take a look at it. Let me help you to close even more gaps in your optimization, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and drop the link here in the chat. For those of you catching me on replay and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't have the chat, reach out to me, reach out to me, okay? Be happy to give you that gift for tuning in as well. So I just wanted to make sure that I put that all in the recording. Thank you, Molly. You know, when you when you hang out with go-givers, you meet more go-givers. Thank you, Molly. 